which is about just the start of COVID-19 uh, cases in the UK. Next slide, please. So the cases for, um, I was on call on that day and then we, um, I've been called to see a, a very young chap, uh, 29 years old, uh, male patient in uh, emergency department. He self presented to our department. Um, he he lives in the hospital accommodation in uh, the university accommodation, which is nearby to the uh, hospital. His main complaint were chest pain for 48 hours. He described the chest pain as central heavy that radiated his left arm, which which is alarming for as as we know for angina type pain. Um, he's been trying uh, simple analgesics like uh, paracetamol and ibuprofen, but not much of um, help. His pain wasn't related to exertion or activities. Um, and then on further questioning, because he's very young chap, not much of risk factors, um, he said he had a bit of fever and the flu-like symptoms about seven to 10 days before his, presence, uh, his presentation to the NE. He has denied any shortness of breath, but he had an on and off palpitations for the last 24 hours. So we asked for an urgent um, ECG. Can you see the ECG slide? Can you see it, Firas? Uh, yes, we can see it. So you can see clearly there's some ST elevation inferiorly in uh, lead uh, two, three uh, AVF. Also, there's some is, uh, ST elevation V5 and V6. Next slide. And this is just a 12 lead. In general, you, you can appreciate the ST elevation. Uh, mostly inferiorly, uh, but also V5, V6. Our initial thinking was it could be an um, circumflex disease, but also from the clinical presentation, we said we thought it could be still myocarditis, given his young, not much of risk factors, and the fever and the flu-like symptoms ten days before. A bedside echo, because I said we have a high suspicious it could be a microarditis, so we did a bedside echo. It showed no regional wall motion abnormalities, so suggests particular uh, artery. Uh, it showed bright pericardium, suggestive of pericarditis, and there's global hypokinesia, but only mild left ventricular impairment. <clears throat> His troponin came back very, very high, so 21,000. Our reference range is 14. Rest of his lab results showed high CRP, high white cell count, raised D dimer with normal renal function. So we did have a discussion between the team how to approach that. We think it is myocarditis, uh, but it's an acute setting. He's only 29 years old. You don't want to be messing about with a 29 years old. Um, so the decision made is to take him to the CAS lab and to do his coronary angiogram. I just have one um, video here. I don't, I don't know if you can see the video running. The next slide, yeah. Is the video playing? It's not playing on my screen. It's it's playing. Playing. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay, so it's, um, it's just, this is just on view. It's just the right coronary artery. I can get into the left, but um, you can see we can appreciate this normal coronaries. This is just the right. It's just an example. So you had normal coronaries as we expected. So the patient moved to CCU. Um, we noticed he had short runs of no sustained ventricular tachycardia, but they are increasing in frequency. We have treated him for myocarditis as per our local protocol and per guidelines. So he's commenced on uh, um, colchicine and non-steroidals. We also started him on bisoprolol given that the increased frequency of his non-sustained VT and ventricular ectopics. I said that was just early March, so we didn't have much of cases of uh, COVID-19. Most of the cases were concentrated in London, but we didn't have any case at that stage in Norwich. Uh, but we, we sent the virus PCR. Unfortunately, it took two to three days for this result to come back. Middle of the night on that night, the patient went into pulseless VT, um, being shocked once, and we managed to get him out into um, sinus rhythm afterwards. We commenced him on a neutron. 
And then we have repeated this echo after the, um, uh, this episode of ventricular tachycardia, which showed his LV function is worsening with about moderate to severe LV impairment. Uh, luckily, we managed to get him a cardiac MRI next day. That actually had diffuse signal intensity with suggestion of um, uh, myocardial wall edema with an extensive transmural lead adolinium enhancement. So the CMR is very, very suggestive of myocarditis. So the diagnosis of myocarditis were confirmed based on the clinical picture and his CMR. So we continue the supportive management. His PCR result came back on the third day showing positive for COVID-19. So he started on S inhibitor and bisoprolol continued. And on day five, he was doing very well and he's been discharged home. We have repeated his echocardiogram about four weeks after the initial presentation, which is only two weeks ago from now. And it showed his LV function is completely back to normal. We have repeated his troponin just to see the trend and it's back to 6-1. And as I mentioned, uh, four weeks before that was 21,000. Next slide. So we, just in a brief summary about um, this case of chest pain that presented in the era of COVID-19, myocarditis and cardiovascular symptoms are common in COVID-19. So we have to have a low um, threshold to uh, think of COVID-19 in patients presenting purely with cardiovascular symptoms. As I said, myocarditis is very common, but also common things come first. If someone comes with ST elevation, you have to have, you have to think as an ACS but also you have to have a high index of suspicion it could be myocarditis. For the general physician and the young doctor seeing patients with possible cardiovascular symptoms, especially in Sudan, I would suggest if you come into so such a scenario, uh, please speak to one of the cardiologists or a senior medics to discuss the case before commencing treatment. Uh, treatment of myocarditis remains the same in the era of uh, COVID-19. There's no change in the guidelines from the ESC and the British societies. Uh, one important note I will uh, I want to stress from this case is you have to watch for arrhythmia, especially for the, in the first 24 hours. This patient had pulse less VT. He's only 29 with no medical history. If he's not being monitored and watched, it could be the end of his life. So please watch for the arrhythmia, especially for the first 24 hours. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Firas. That was a fantastic uh, 